In a striking revelation that promises to reshape the automotive landscape, Honda's CEO Toshihiro Mibe recently announced that the company would no longer maintain traditional dealerships. This is not just a tweak in Honda's sales model, it's a complete pivot away from a centuries-old industry norm. But what does this mean for the automotive world, and how does it compare with the moves made by other car manufacturers? The old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, seems to be undergoing a revolution in the automobile industry. The traditional dealership model has been a fixture of the car buying experience for as long as most can remember. It's a model that involves extensive networks of dealerships, expansive lots brimming with shiny new cars, haggling salespeople, and that new car smell wafting through cavernous showrooms. Yet, here we have Honda, a global behemoth in the industry, deciding to steer away from it all. It's a brave and forward-looking move, especially for a company that has been built upon a foundation of tradition and incremental innovation. Honda's decision to part ways with dealerships has come as a shock to many, but when you look closely, it might just be a response to the prevailing winds of change. Indeed, Honda isn't the first to rethink the dealership model. Tesla, the electric car giant led by Elon Musk, has been bypassing dealerships since its inception, opting for a direct-to-customer model. Instead of sprawling lots, Tesla has chic urban showrooms, more akin to modern tech stores than traditional car dealerships. Customers can walk in, check out the sleek electric models like the Tesla Model S or Model 3, and place an order directly. It's a streamlined experience, devoid of the usual haggling and paperwork that many have come to associate with car buying. But while Tesla's decision to forgo dealerships was initially met with skepticism, the company's meteoric rise and burgeoning sales figures have proven that it's possible to be successful without them. This probably didn't go unnoticed by Honda's leadership. If an upstart like Tesla could reinvent the wheel, or at least the way it's sold, why couldn't a seasoned player like Honda? Yet there's more to this story than just following in Tesla's tire tracks. The automotive industry is at the cusp of a major transformation, driven by the trifecta of electric vehicles, autonomous technology, and digitization. EVs, with their fewer moving parts, promise lower maintenance and, by extension, reduced need for service visits, which traditionally formed a significant part of a dealership's revenue. Furthermore, the rise of digital platforms means consumers are increasingly comfortable researching, customizing, and even purchasing cars online. When one thinks about other brands like Volvo with their Care by Volvo subscription model, or even Ford's Ford Pass digital experience, it's clear that digital innovation is becoming as important as automotive engineering. For many, the act of driving to a dealership, negotiating prices, and waiting for paperwork is becoming an outdated and tedious experience, replaced by the convenience of online transactions and home deliveries. Other manufacturers are also recognizing this shift. Brands like Volkswagen with their ID, Series or General Motors with their aggressive EV push have been increasingly focusing on enhancing the digital customer experience. The dealership in many ways is becoming an intermediary that both manufacturers and customers can do without. We, oui. but what about the iconic brands like Ferrari, Bentley, or Rolls-Royce? These marks have always been about exclusivity, with the buying experience being as important as the cars themselves. Will they also consider changing their sales approach? It's possible, but it's also likely that ultra-luxury brands might retain their showroom experiences, simply because they cater to a niche that demands that kind of personalized attention. Back to Honda. The company's decision has far-reaching implications. What happens to the vast network of dealerships that have been associated with the brand for years? Will we see a shift to more service-oriented centers where the focus is on maintaining existing vehicles rather than pushing new sales? Only time will tell. One thing is clear though, the automotive industry is in flux and Honda's decision is a testament to that. With the industry transitioning towards electric and autonomous vehicles and the purchasing process being reshaped by digital innovations, the traditional dealership model seems to be on borrowed time. As we move forward in this ever-evolving landscape, the repercussions of Honda's decision will ripple beyond just the automotive sector. The entire supply chain from part manufacturers to logistics providers will have to adapt to this paradigm shift. One aspect that's worth delving into is the economic implications for towns and cities that have 
for decades been reliant on the existence of dealerships. From the salesperson to the mechanic, many jobs have been intrinsically linked to the traditional dealership model. Will these roles vanish or will they evolve into something new? It's probable that with the phasing out of dealerships, we might see an uptick in specialized service centers, especially as the shift to EVs necessitates a new set of maintenance skills. Think of the Apple Store's genius bar, but for cars. Consumers might not be visiting to haggle over the price of a new car, but they will need experts to guide them on battery health, software updates, or autonomous features. In that sense, the role of the salesperson might evolve into that of a car tech expert, someone who understands the intricate details of modern vehicles and can guide consumers through the complexities of their new rides. Moreover, the vast real estate that dealerships occupy, especially in urban settings, will come under the scanner. As Honda and potentially other automakers move away from the traditional model, these spaces could be repurposed. We could envisage a world where old dealerships morph into community EV charging hubs, urban green spaces, or even entertainment centers centered around the brand. The possibilities are endless. Another interesting facet to consider is the global perspective. While Honda's decision might be setting a precedent in certain markets, will this strategy be mirrored in places where the digital transition is slower and the tactile experience of car buying still holds immense value? Markets in Asia, Africa, and parts of South America, for instance, might still see the conventional dealership model flourish for a while longer due to varied consumer behavior and technological adoption rates. Beyond Honda, how quickly will other Japanese auto giants like Toyota, Nissan, or Suzuki respond? These brands, renowned for their methodical approach and deeply rooted traditions, will likely be observing Honda's journey keenly. Any missteps by Honda will serve as lessons, while successes could hasten the transition for these other players. In terms of competition, car makers will also have to differentiate themselves more aggressively in the online space. Digital platforms level the playing field, and without physical showrooms to showcase their offerings, brands will need to innovate. Augmented reality test drives, virtual reality car customization, and enhanced online concierge services could become the norm. Also, this shift could also alter brand loyalties. The dealership was often a touch point for building and maintaining a relationship with the customer. With that gone, automakers will need to find new ways to engage and retain their customer base especially in a digital ecosystem that's teeming with distractions. For Honda, and indeed any automaker considering such a shift, customer trust will be paramount. With the removal of a physical touchpoint, the dealership, car makers will need to ensure their virtual platforms are not only user-friendly, but also infallible in terms of security and reliability. As seen with companies like Amazon, whose success is largely attributed to its seamless customer experience and unyielding trustworthiness, Honda will need to adopt a similar gold standard for its online dealings. Meanwhile, competitors will be keenly observing Honda's transition. Successes will be emulated, and failures will be noted as pitfalls to avoid. As with any major shift, there will be challenges. The logistics of delivering a car directly to a customer, ensuring quality after sales service, and managing trade-ins or returns are complex issues that will need to be addressed meticulously. Also worth noting is the environmental impact. With a reduction in physical infrastructure, the carbon footprint associated with maintaining large, energy-consuming showrooms will diminish. However, this could be offset by the transportation emissions from delivering vehicles directly to consumers. It will be intriguing to see how Honda, known for its commitment to sustainability, navigates this aspect. In essence, while Honda's shift away from dealerships is a significant development in its own right, it's also a microcosm of a broader global trend, the fusion of technology, changing consumer behaviors, and evolving societal norms is leading industries to reinvent themselves. As businesses grapple with these changes, adaptability and foresight will be crucial. For now, all eyes are on Honda, but it's clear that the ripples of their decision will impact far more than just the automotive sector. The next decade will be a litmus test for traditional business models across the board, and only the most agile and forward-thinking companies are likely to thrive. Thank you for sticking with me all the way to the end. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure the notification bell is turned on so you don't miss a video.